Okay, hey, welcome back to the next Using Emacs video. Um, this one I hope will be a little bit short. I want to follow up on um, my last video and also just do a couple other miscellaneous things. Um, one uh, difference this time around is if you'll notice here we have our configuration file and you'll notice I added this configuration for web mode. That's for the next video. Um, I recorded this and the next segment and just messed up the video, messed up the recording. Um, but since I you know, do all of this live, I already put the stuff in my configuration file and I decided not to uh, get rid of it this time around and I figured I would just record it over and I wouldn't recode everything live. So in the last video, we talked about loading stuff um, only if a file exists so I could put uh, stuff that I didn't want on GitHub on a local system and I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, I, I got some um, good feedback from um, you know, various places on the video comments, etc. Um, so, for example, over on Ereal, um, which is uh, JCS's blog, which is an awesome blog for uh, Emacs stuff, and I encourage everyone to check it out. In fact, we're going to be going to a couple of um, a couple of uh, his posts in this video. Um, so he talks a little bit about uh, his way of approaching this, which is different from mine, which I think is cool. Notice that he can um, uh, basically load, and you give an extra argument. Uh, uh, at the end, and that true argument basically says, okay, if this doesn't work, it'll just return the true. That's that's nice. Um, another thing that I realized is you could do, you could do when file readable p of the file, load the file, and when is a specialized form of the if, uh, so you can also use that. Um, I. I didn't use that because I just didn't remember it, to be honest with you. And um, a nice thing here is um, there are a lot of ways of doing it. Um, I kind of like leaving it this way. I think I will because it's nice to have a little um, uh, defun how to define a function in Elisp and, um, and how to use it and a little example of the if statement. I made one little change, which I added this string here, uh, load the Elisp file, you know, just a little comment string, the doc string. So now if you get help for this function, so that's control H F. Uh, control H, H function um, describe the function. The point is on the function, so it'll it'll um, default to that. Otherwise, you could type in the function you're looking for help for, and you'll see here that load the file if it exists. Let's quit out of that. Um, so that's kind of nice as well. So um, so that's the uh, load file stuff that I wanted to mention. And now let's talk about a couple of little miscellaneous um, uh, applications. So the first one is. Um, I did a video a little while ago on undo tree, and that made Emacs undo usable, because without it, um, I never could really, I could do the basic undo, you know, just hit undo once or twice, but not for any complex undo, and undo tree just made it so much easier. I don't use it a lot, um, you know, because I don't have to do that many levels of undo a lot, but when, when I need it, it's huge. Uh, but another thing that was always kind of funky was the, um, the kill ring for killing and yanking and whacking and yanking or cut and paste for you know for you youngins out there um, and the the yanking was always a problem in that well I'm going to load up Emacs with dash Q which means don't run the configuration so this is a raw Emacs um, and let's go into a buffer and let's say I have line one line two line three line four four line five and you know that I can do control K twice and control Y to yank it. Um, I can also mark and cut and paste. But if I, you know, I do various cuts and pastes here over time, um, these are now all in the kill ring. And I can, there's a command um, called yank pop, which is bound to meta Y. So if I do regular control Y, it brings, it brings up the last thing I cut. But if I then hit meta Y, each time I hit it, it cycles through that kill ring so you can basically bring back an earlier kill. And that's actually pretty cool, but I find it a little annoying because I don't always remember where it is and what, it, it's just not great. So there happens to be a way to do this and going from where, well, well, let me get rid of this window. Um, and here over, you know, JCS blogged about it, better kill ring manipulation, which links to um, Ben's tip over here. And um, I'll link to this in my blog post. I'm going to kill this for now just to keep track of things. But it basically does a modification, not a modification, but it's part of the council package um, where you can do this yank pop. And it looks like I have some of this 
not here. It looks like I accidentally wiped out some of it. So um, I'm not going to, let's hope that this works. I may have to fix this later. Let me revert the file. Um, hmm. Because that clearly isn't right, because that should bind to there. Uh, all right, so let me actually redo this one. Um, better kill ring manipulation. Go over here. Better kill ring manipulation. Where are we? Better kill ring manipulation. Sorry about this. Go over to. Why is it not going to? Huh. Let's see if this link works. So we got a little problem with the link. Oh, here we go. Um, the use package for council, we can mark that. Come back to here. Let's yank that. Get rid of this guy here. Um, reload this block. And I think that worked. Uh, so let's go to another buffer. And let's do line, line A, line B, line C, line D. Well, that's already in the kill ring. Doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. But the point is now, I don't have to do my control Y. If I just do Alt Y, you'll see that it brings up the kill ring down here. And if I keep doing Alt Y, it still cycles through it just like in the old ways. But I can also go up and down or Control N or Control Previous to select what to paste. So it's, it's really much easier and much nicer and much cleaner. And let me just save my configuration there since, yeah, that was a problem. I don't know how I got rid of those by mistake. Um, so anyway, that's one nice little configuration. And the other ones I'm going to show you, let's go down to MISC packages. These are all things we had before. Um, but I added these other things. So there's this save interprogram paste before kill. So if I do control H V for help on variable, you'll see that that saves, saves the clipboard strings into the kill ring before replacing them. And uh, I got this from another aerial post and I decided to try it out. I haven't really used it yet, but it sounds interesting. And it looks like it just, just gives you a cleaner connection between the system kill ring or the system clipboard and the Emacs kill ring, which is always nice. And then the last things that I want to show you for today are these three lines here. Um, a second ago, I just used F5 to reload the buffer, and um, I just have F5 bound to revert buffer. It just reloads from the file system. But these two lines I find really helpful. Uh, global auto revert mode, and then um, uh, this uh, setting the verbose to nil. And the idea is whenever a file changes, if I have a file on a buffer, if it changes on the file system, it'll automatically reload it. Um, and I like this, not for, um, I don't need it for all things, but I, I like this for my org mode files that I'm using for my agenda, my schedule, uh, things like that, uh, my to-do lists, because um, I work on multiple machines. I work on my machine at home, I work on a machine at work, I've got a couple of laptops, and I'm good at saving things, but I'm not good at loading them. So whenever I add something to my to-do list, I'll save the file, and that's great, but then, if I'm um, using my laptop on the go for this, I'm, when I get home, I'm gonna forget to load it. And then I'm gonna make another change at home and save it, and now all of a sudden I've got conflicting uh, information. So um, you know, I've got a buffer that's, that I'm trying to write and it's already changed on disk and that's bad. Um, you know, I have to merge these things. Um, so, I, oh, and that's because, uh, sorry, I didn't say this. That's because I'm putting these files on either Dropbox or own cloud or on a shared file system. Um, but by using the revert, uh, the auto revert mode, if I'm on the go and I save this file, by the time I get home, it's been reloaded to my Emacs that I leave going on my desktop. So I find this really, really useful. So anyway, that's it for today. Let me check our time. We're about 10 minutes. That's the usual. So uh, we're going to stop now. And um, I hope you found this useful. And the next one, we're going to talk a little bit about web mode, which um, I already put in. And uh, yeah, so that'll be it. Okay, so see you guys next time.